On today's episode, we have a boyfriend who decides to celebrate their anniversary with another person, a wife who has been accused for cutting the strings off her husband's PJs, a bridezilla who decided to clap back, and the disaster date story written by one of our Wikimaniacs. For our patron bonus story, it's Halloween tomorrow, so figured we throw in a scary story where a game goes absolutely wrong. Head on over to patreon.com slash cultivate podcast network to hear that bonus story, ad free episodes, and additional content. Reddit on Wiki starts now. What's up, Wikimaniacs, and welcome back to Reddit on Wiki. I am your host today. It is I, your Pony Pinoy John, and I am joined by the most handsomest Canadian ever, not named Whoa. Ryan Reynolds. Oh, wait, not Ryan Reynolds. Is it Ryan Reynolds? He's yeah, Canadian, it is Ryan right? Reynolds. I think another Ryan's from here, too. Gosling. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, so cuter no named, than all the Ryans. Yeah, we, we take out Ryans and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have a shot. <laughs> <laughs> we got the cutest Canadian around. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Josh Shell. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Uh, I forgot it was Halloween, but I did dress up. I, I wore my Ring you Ghost did. merch. Ring uh, Ghost. It's very comfy and it's very cute. So, plug it, my brother. Uh, I'll plug Where that. Where can they get that? Uh, on our shop, uh, redditonwikishop.com. Uh, I believe it's it's usually posted on our show notes. Um, but another announcement. We've got Ogtha merch finally. <laughs> uh, I'll flash it on the screen here. Uh, we've got Ogtha apparel finally coming in and I'm super excited about this one. It's been a long time coming and I've been working on it for a while in the background, just uh, trying to get it out. So I hope you guys enjoy it. We're going to be dropping it as this episode's dropped so you can go check that out. Um, and if you're a patron, uh, maybe we'll give you a bit of a discount for the for the of first course. first week or something like that. So uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, super excited about this. Uh, Ogtha merch. It's people probably listen now are like, who the fuck is Ogtha? Because <laughs> it's been so long. You're gonna have to go back. You'll have to go back and look at the uh, the cockroach dating episodes. I don't know which <laughs> they were, but uh, I'm sure someone will link it. <laughs> It'll finally infestation your closet. Infest your closet. Infest your closet yeah. with Og the merch. <laughs> you can finally get your cockroach girlfriend a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> and that was not an insult there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that's super excited for that anyway. Love it. Love it. And yeah, check out our merch store, Wikimaniacs. We got some, we got some good stuff right there. Josh is putting in a lot of great work there. So uh, look at that ring ghost. Ring ghost. Love it, love it. Awesome. Well, you ready to uh get started with the with the stories today, my brother? Always ready. Always ready. Uh no AI for this episode because <laughs> I'm not an asshole like Josh. Um, yeah. just kidding. <laughs> but uh first story is cross posted by one of the upcoming ghosts as well. Uh this Ooh. one is cross posted by Coffee Cups. Hey. And uh again, disappointed that you didn't post that one story from like last the week. The MIDSL Coffee Cups one from last week. Disappointed. <laughs> um this one is cross posted from R slash true off my chest. The title is My boyfriend spent our anniversary with his female best friends, and now people think he's dating his sister. Wait, what the fuck? <laughs> How so did sweet that come out? Shit, bro. <laughs> but also, I don't see the connection to that. Anyway, uh, hey. interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Long story, but bear with me. My ex-boyfriend, let's call him Tyler, was very... <laughs> <laughs> That's such an ex-boyfriend name. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking Tyler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> my ex-boyfriend, Tyler, was very close to his female best friend, Lily, so close that people thought they were dating. The effort he put into my Valentine's gift was nothing compared to what he does for Lily's Palentine's. So they have oh. a little celebration pal. Here's Tines the thing. Day. You can celebrate Palentine's, but you better be putting more effort into your girlfriend's oh, present. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's crazy. One day, a coworker of his confronted me for flirting with him when he has a girlfriend. Oh. I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I tried explaining to him that I was his girlfriend, but he didn't believe me. He didn't leave me alone until I showed him pictures of us on my phone. And I've tried talking to Tyler several times about how this makes me feel, but he always brushed me off and said Lily is like family to him and I'm being insecure. Bro, if if your coworker is mistaking your girlfriend as some random person, oh yeah, you've got a problem. <laughs> Our anniversary was coming up and a travel agent friend of mine got me a good deal for a two-night stay at a resort about two and a half hours away. I booked it and when I told Tyler, he seemed very excited. About a week before our trip, he came to me, asked if he could go with Lily since she has a lot going on and could use a pick-me-up. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, dude. Fucking Tyler. Oh. Bro, you got a free trip and you out here want to take somebody else? Dude, the way I would be going out with this coworker to this trip. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, fuck I'm you. taking Whatever Brian with is. me or some <laughs> shit. Let's go with fucking Brian. Um, I was shocked and asked him if he really rather spend our anniversary with another woman. He just got mad and called me a cruel, jealous witch and said Lily really need him right now. Oh my God. Oh, the flags, the red flags. <laughs> Tyler, you are just waving them right now. Baby Jesus, boy. dude. When I still told him no, he said he didn't want to go at all. Then he left and we didn't talk for three days. So I took that as us officially breaking up. As I was crying to my best friend about the breakup and being unable to get my money back, she suggested we go as friends. That's a good friend for you to like. Uh, yeah. Have Supporter. someone go. Exactly. Yeah. And, and and a free trip. Shit, I'll go with you too, baby girl. True. Um, <laughs> time skipped to about an hour after we check in. I got a call from the front desk saying someone was trying to check in under my reservation. Yeah. When I went down to check, I saw Tyler and Lily. The balls on this dude. The balls. Holy shit. Tyler immediately stomped towards me and went off on me for taking the spot when Lily needed it more and then Lily plopped down on a chair and started bawling her eyes out, saying how she just wanted a relaxing weekend to forget about all that's happened to her. Oh. <laughs> after a while, <laughs> oh after a while of him screaming and her crying, security forces them to leave. Oh, thank goodness. The next day on social media, Tyler posted that he and Lily were officially together. Dude, you are an absolute piece of shit. Oh my God, Tyler. Like, to, oh, there, there's just no, <laughs> the, 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 I don't know, empathy of your actual girlfriend, no thought behind your mind to be like, oh, oh smooth you know, brain as fuck. Oh my God, this dude is so fucking stupid. Oh my God. <laughs> Uh, to finish this off, unfortunately for him, my friends and family are vengeful people. Thank God. They all started commenting on his post with comments like, isn't that your sister? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> are are troll related and <laughs> sweet home Alabama? <laughs> uh, he tried to deny those comments, but it was no use because the rumors already spread. Yep. Hell yeah. It's been three months since then, and while nobody bothers them about it anymore, it definitely ruined their reputation, and that makes me happy. Good. <laughs> Fuck those people, dude. Dude. Like, just break up with your, your girlfriend if you have a clearly sign. have feelings for this other person. Yes. Crazy. Crazy. Uh, this is the same guy who would eventually be like, oh, men and women can't be friends. <laughs> and this is the reason, like, you are just exhibit A, buddy. <laughs> yeah. I mean, which, he's a, which he's is not, not the a, case. Yeah. No, yeah. I was going to say, he's not the the reason. I'm just saying that's his mentality going forward. Yeah. Because um, men and women can absolutely be friends. Uh, absolutely. Because there are men out there and women out there who see friends as just that. They don't see them as. Uh, potential partners. <laughs> you know his ass purposely stopped purposely stopped talking to her because he was he was gonna pull that move of like he's gonna uh, redeem that reservation for them. Also, yeah, to stop talking to someone is just so childish. Exactly. How old Not are these even, people again? I didn't. It didn't. Didn't say. say. Yeah, probably. No, it didn't say. Young, but uh, although it wouldn't surprise me if they, we've heard tons of stories of older people doing this shit like this too. 
God <sighs> damn, that shit was. That one made whew. me angry. <laughs> that shit was something else. All right. Well, this next story I purposely picked because of you, Josh. All right. And I feel like um, you're going to get a kick out of this because oh, no. I think it's, it's, a little, it's a little pick me up. It's not, it's not bad. But at first, you're going to be like, oh, no. But <laughs> this one is from r slash relationship uh, advice. Cross posted by for real this time outside Flamingo two four six. Oh hey, sorry yeah, for using you, know, you last using week. Using your name. Oh my god. <laughs> I am the asshole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the title is my male thirty four wife thirty two female has been cutting the strings of my pajama pants and she won't admit to it. Not sure why. What a fucking weird predict i wouldn't even like well like strings what do you mean like the strings that you tie it yeah or? like the, the tie it with yeah to kind of yeah to to make the your pajama pants tighter i guess so or are you blaming the wife for uh something that's like you know you haven't figured out what happened yet so interesting yeah anyways okay <laughs> for back <laughs> for background sake we have been married for 10 years this behavior is pretty recent this really isn't that bad but i was hoping someone could have an explanation because I asked her about this and she just denies it, but we don't have kids, so it can only be her. <laughs> That's not true. I've definitely, <laughs> I don't know if this will spoil the story. I have no idea what the story is about, but I've put like pants in the dryer and they come out with like one strings ripped off or something like that. Like that <laughs> it's happens. It's the dryer's fault. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah. Like it catches in the dryer or something. Uh, yeah, it could so be the case. I have no idea what this case is, but yeah. it's definitely not the only reason. <laughs> But there's only one logical explanation. It's got to be the wife, right? But I won't talk to her. <laughs> yeah, no. In the last year or so, I've been discovering the tie strings from my pajama pants have been disappearing. It could only be her removing these because we don't have kids. And I'm the only one who actually has to leave the house to go to work. So she's alone in the house a lot. So this guy probably doesn't do laundry either. So Okay, uh, interesting. Yeah. Her pants still have all their strings, but none of mine do. I have bought more pants to replace the ones with missing strings, but those eventually go missing too. We have a good relationship, and I don't know why she denies it when I ask about it. It's really not that big of a deal, so I don't really press the issue. It's just really bizarre. She is a bit of a prankster, and so am I. Okay. But I don't know, <laughs> but I don't know what the point of the prank is if this is indeed some sort of practical joke. Does anyone else have any experience with this sort of thing? Um, update. So, okay, I was going to say, oh, <laughs> I'm, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> I Updates. Mean, it's kind of a low-key prank if it is. like yeah. It's annoying, don't get me wrong. You got to uh, keep buying new fucking pairs of PJs. Yeah, I, yes, but like because uh, I, I like them tighter, so I, I definitely do my um, strings up. But yeah, it's a wild prank. My waist naturally keeps my pants tied to begin with, so I don't even. Know you just get to eat more. I think that's the <laughs> that's true. That's true. Um, update. Okay, so I just got home and checked inside the waistbands of all my pajama pants. I only have five of them, so it didn't take long. No strings in them, so they definitely didn't retract. I need to get some sleep, so I'll check the washer drum and filter when I wake up. Mm. Update number two. Someone in the comments suggested maybe my cat has been taking them <laughs> out and hiding them since cats tend to have hiding spots. One of his is under a couch and I just checked and I found one there. Oh shit. It's just one, but it's a start. I'm going to check his other spots too. So I That's picked it funny. because I, I've Ringo. never <laughs> Yeah, Ringo's right there. Uh, exactly. She's never done that. She's never cared about she, shoelaces she will attack shoelaces Ooh. but uh only if you're tying them all right update number three and this is the final update okay so when my wife woke up i told her about finding a string in our cat's hiding spot she was amused and wanted to help me look at his other spots for them too well none of his other known spots had them but she noticed something weird about the back of our other couch it had a small hole in the bottom of it I shine a flashlight in the hole and I found a whole bunch of random stuff in there. <laughs> we took the cushion off this section of the couch and cut a hole next to the spring and voila, we found his true secret stash. <laughs> All my strings were there. That's funny. Not, on <laughs> not only that, but we found pretty much all of my wife's missing smaller squishmallows and her missing AirPods. We even found a missing pendant that we've been trying to find for years. 
and I'm going to buy her a box of chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I mean, wild to assume that's your wife, but also like, <laughs> uh, that's so funny that the cat's just like been trolling you for, <laughs> yeah. for months like, now. We're all a prank family, me yeah. included. <laughs> It is true though. Like, um, we have a couch that our like Ringo can get under, um, yeah. cause it's lifted and every once in a while I have to move it just to get like whatever shit she's put under there. <laughs> uh, same with under our bed. Uh, we'll find like, have to go under and get balls or the springs she likes to play <laughs> with or anything like that. Cause she just puts them under there. Uh, cats do be, um, catting. <laughs> yeah. Catting. <laughs> Never Dude, strings yet. Kevin is a uh, Kevin loves destroying mail. That's his oh. shit. Like, yeah. Uh, every time like there's a sh- like a box like or like an Amazon box, we're just like, you want to fuck things up, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> I'll fuck this up, and he'll do. He'll just destroy that box, and he'll fall right asleep. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, this do uh, Julia always be buying him like some of these like you know nice toys, but he's like, nah, fam, I just want an Amazon oh, box, dude, bro. Cats are this. <laughs> Rick goes the exact same way. We buy her like. We, uh, when we first got her, we bought her like, uh, it was like the bag of like 50 different kinds of toys or whatever. Yes. Um, she'll play with the spring right now, but <laughs> other than that, zip ties, we'll get zip ties from like wires or anything like that. You ball it up and you throw it fucking loose. Yeah. We can entertain her for hours with that shit. <laughs> she doesn't Same. care about anything else. <laughs> Nah, boxes, like anything, like piece of papers, like, oh, this is my shit. Like, yeah. You bring <laughs> the like these fucking, shit. like a, a Kong or like some sort of like, you know, like a tough toy. He's like, nah. Nah, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want this shit. And like our, our, our pets are just simple creatures, you know, we yeah. try to spoil them and think like that's what they want. But no, they just want the simple things in life. Yeah. Yeah. Or Ringo plays with their water fountain too. That's a oh. big thing. We'll put, oh, cause yeah. it's. Uh, the top will pop off so that you can like empty it, stuff like that. Um, and her favorite thing is, uh, to go over and like use her teeth to lift it up. <laughs> and then she just stares at it <laughs> and then stares at me. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck like, do you want from me? You took it off. <laughs> uh. Speaking of simple things in life, we're going to quick, ah, we're going to cut to a quick ad break and hey. you know, make you, make your, uh, make your eating life more simple by uh, supporting our sponsors. So we'll be right back with Maniacs. And we're back to enjoy that meal. Hope that was, it was a smooth good. transition, John. Thank you. I kind of stuttered a little bit there, but, um, that's okay. Awesome. Awesome. Well, <laughs> this third story is cross posted. Uh, by Finn Artemis. Oh. And this one is from r slash Brightzillas. And um, this is going to be an interesting one because a lot of times, you know, we kind of dunk on Brightzillas, but you get to hear the other side of the story this time. I feel we're pretty even on bride stories. I would True. say there's some, there's some we dunk on, but then there's others where like, no, it's understandable why they're being, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's a 50-50 you- on this show. Yeah, you get you get the 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 bridezilla side and the other perspective too. So like this is gonna be okay. a nice, interesting one. I'm gonna need your help reading later on, Josh. So, okay, uh, fair enough. Yeah, as someone going through the wedding process, I understand the stress. You will definitely be the bride when you're reading. So <laughs> perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. So this perspective is from like uh, right now is from the uh, the bridal party. Okay. So this is the first part that I'm gonna read. So gotcha. Uh, again, this is from r slash bridezillas cross posted by Finn Artemis. The title is Destination Wedding Nightmare. Mm. Okay. So going to a destination wedding for someone I've kind of not been mega close with, and they put in parentheses, uh, to keep it vague, there's some things it feels like I owe them on, so I ended up agreeing to go. My husband and I financially found a way to make it work, uh, it being our only vacation of the year. By the way, this person does not have sentence structures. Um, (laughs) Asshole. (laughs) <laughs> Asshole. Uh, we figured it would be one to two days spent at the wedding and the rest, it would be time to ourselves. However, this is not the case. It had turned into four days of our slash my time being occupied because she wants 1.5 days before the wedding, one day for the wedding, and 1.5 days after a wedding to do girl stings, etc. Interesting. I, ca- I caved and agreed to be a bridesmaid. 
and they put in parentheses. I, w I was asked when everyone else was, but I said no because thought we couldn't afford it. And then got a sob story how no one else could afford to go. So if I still wanted to, I could. So I said yes. And then find out she lied and there's actually eight of them. Okay. All in one sentence. Yeah, God I was going to say, I can see you struggling through that. <laughs> <Whew>. <laughs> it's just really pissing me off how much of our time she is trying to demand. I'm all for a bachelorette day slash night and the wedding day slash night. But after that, we want to have our own vacation. I don't want to keep doing random like beach bachelorette days the day after your wedding. Why don't you want to spend that with your husband? Sorry to vent, but like God. Every time I try to get out of it, I'm basically told, nope, not an option. We're at the point of just backing out altogether, or I'm just going to go back to being a guest at the wedding, and that's it. Because not only is it $5,000 financial cost, but like four out of five days time cost is just too steep for me. Please tell me I'm not a terrible person. Ha ha. <laughs> I know ha ha at the end was weird, but um, yes. as someone who just went to a um, uh, at the, why am I blanking destination wedding? There we go. Uh, mm -hmm. like this summer. Yeah, I get it. It is expensive. It was our one trip this year, uh, that we did together. Uh, so I, I understand that. However, the bride and groom were like, Hey, we're doing a bachelor bachelorette one night, uh, and then the wedding the other night. And then you can do basically do whatever you want. Now I get, it's not the same as a regular vacation because yeah, especially with how we did it, we vacationed with a bunch of people. Um, so I get, it can be a bit more stressful. It's not as much as relaxing, it's not relaxing, not, right? You're not getting as much time together. So I, I understand that, but that's something for you to weigh out if you actually think it's worth it or not. Um, yeah. I think, I, I think you kind of suck if you say yes and then say no. Um, that's that uh, you're I mean, ruining like they're like, you know, the plans and essentially what's, what's in place already. Right. Yeah, I get it if you have to say no because, you know, financial things change or, or mm -hmm. whatever, but it sounds like you already were kind of half in at the beginning anyway. So yeah. backing out now would be like kind of shitty, but also I can't blame you if you're trying to balance finances uh, as yeah. someone who- Finances are always, yeah. Yeah, had to buy, balance finances for, for our trip as well. So it's a tough situation. Um, I'm interested to see the other side here. <laughs> cool. Pull up that, uh, pull up that link. My brother, I think I sent it to you on our chat. Let me know if you don't have it. And then I'm going to need you to like uh, scroll past and then start on the, um, the the text thread that we have. Okay. So let me know when you say it. I'll be the I'll be in the, the white box because that's the OP originally of the first perspective. Gotcha. And I'm going to need you to be the bride, baby boy, because you're about to experience that. Or okay. room, but you know what I mean. Um, perfect. Holy shit. Those meds are expensive as fuck. I couldn't imagine paying that. Yeah. I couldn't imagine paying $5,000 for a destination wedding of someone I didn't like either, but here you are. I'm sorry. What? I'm not stupid, Shannon. I'm on all the wedding subreddits. I always read the posts <laughs> regarding destination weddings and your posts seemed a little too similar, except for the lies you added in. <gasps> I'm not going to lie. I'm very hurt, especially because of my, I thought we were close friends. And then they send a post of the <laughs> a screenshot of the post. <laughs> uh, don't worry. You don't need to back out because I'm not, I'm doing it for you. You are absolutely no longer a bridesmaid and you are uninvited from the wedding as well as my life. And then they send us another screenshot uh, where the original OP says, that's what I'm coming from. Like, I just don't understand the giant time before and the giant time after. And when I was hesitant, I was berated saying I never liked to leave my husband's side. Uh, and then they say, Oh, I berated you more lies. I see LOL. Enjoy your vacation. Smiley face. <laughs> so <laughs> is there more? It, it should be, there should be one last one. Oh, there is one more here. Uh, Oh, so you have nothing to say now, Shannon. You sure had a lot to say on Reddit. I think the only thing you owe me, whatever the fuck that means, is an explanation for why you think it's okay to pretend to be my friend to my face and then turn around to make up some fantasy about uh, me to get validation from Reddit. So spicy. So Damn. speaking of speaking of spicy, the bridezilla in question actually also wrote something, right? Uh, oh, to shit. Be, uh, to, to, to give a, a little bit more context. So this is what they put. Okay. So um, they put, I'm an active Reddit user. That's one 
fuck up by the OP for that one. Yeah, wild not to assume that. <laughs> I'm an active uh, Reddit user on all the wedding subreddits, so anytime I see a post about destination weddings, it piques my interest. Once I realized that could, this could possibly be about me, my heart sank. I checked the profile and sure enough, there were identifiable pictures of my ex-bridesmaid's dog, her work information, <laughs> story about her fiance's mom, etc. Um, I sent a screenshot of this to one of my other bridesmaids to ask why they're planning an apparently four-day bachelorette party for me since I know they had a group chat where they were all discussing and planning a surprise for me. But she said that this actually is not true at all. <laughs> so she just lied. <laughs> yeah, she just lied for some Reddit sympathy points, Reddit karma, or whatever. Crazy. Um, actually, this whole post isn't true at all. So I, of course, confronted my dear bridesmaid, and they put in, in a parentheses, who I've, by the way, been friends with since middle school, and we text every single day. And she pretended she didn't know what I was talking about while quickly <laughs> deleting everything on her profile. People got screenshots, baby girl. Hell and yeah. here we are <laughs> talking about this shit. <laughs> um, I decided to have some fun and pick apart every lie she told in the post, reminding her that she knew the truth and again asking why she lied about every single thing. Anyways, I gave her the out that she clearly wanted since I guess her, say, uh, her saying how excited she was uh, for my wedding the night before meant that she actually never wanted to be a bridesmaid. Addressing some of the comments, she was already a bridesmaid and she asked how many there are. I told her six to eight, depending on if my two cousins could afford to come. Okay. No, no sob story or lies, uh, lies there. I was just answering a question. Me not wanting to spend time with my husband. The day of our wedding is a full romantic day for just the two of us. So I have no idea what she's talking about. <laughs> she knows the plan. Uh, I have told about her this exactly a few, a few days ago. After that, we are spending the most uh, spending the rest of the trip doing excursions and stuff with all of our guests as a group because everyone traveled so far to come celebrate us. Some of our bridesmaids and groomsmen and other guests live halfway across the world and we haven't seen them in two years. So why would we just go off and ignore everyone when they spent so much time and effort to see us? This isn't our honeymoon, people. We have a romantic honeymoon planned later in 2024 this destination wedding is a time for the people we love to celebrate and our love with us. Yeah, so, so I think that uh, pretty much proves don't read, it, don't believe everything you see on Reddit. Read Reddit. <laughs> yeah, and uh, a lot of times, a lot of Reddit uh, Reddit posts could be one sided. So uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it is true. We only get the the one side. Uh, so it's nice to see both sides this time. Um, yeah, I mean, this it's a weird thing to make up all this stuff about just to get some karma points. Seriously. Especially like using your real account where it's easily <laughs> traceable back to you. Uh, you should have definitely used a, a anonymous uh, username mm -hmm. and then not used as many details, but crazy. That's crazy. And I mean, yeah, it makes sense that the bride would want to spend time with the people that are going to be there. Um, yeah. When we definitely went, we went on um, uh, the, to the destination wedding this summer, we spent time with the bride and groom some of the days just because it's like, oh, we haven't seen you guys in a while. You know what I mean? True. So yeah, it's uh, everything she asked for seems to be pretty normal ask uh, yeah. <laughs> for this. Um, if your your whole reasoning was just to get to, to find some backbone to say, hey, I'm not coming because I can't afford it. Uh, just say that. Like, just that's say that. Way easier. Yeah. <laughs> Considering they said uh, uh, the the bridezilla said they've been friends for since middle school, right? And yeah. They text every day, so I don't know what the fuck is wrong with that friend being faking stuff around her. Yeah, it's weird. I mean, I get it sucks saying no to your friend to not go to their wedding, but people who have destination weddings know that there's a chance that people won't be able to make it. Absolutely, and um, that's yeah, that's that's absolutely fair too. Yeah, and they make that you know they make that deal in their head. They're like, okay, some people aren't going to make it, but you know this is where we want to do it or this is cheaper for us or whatever it happens to be. You just be straight up with them. <laughs> it's crazy. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So we're on to our last story for today before we transition to the fuck Mary Yeet uh, section. Ooh. And this one, the goat herself mid score uh, requested <sighs> that uh, we do a little more disaster date stories. Cause it's been a while. Hell right? yeah. So, um, and, uh, whenever the goat asks for something, we oblige because mid score, <laughs> our subreddit, 
that's her subreddit. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> we just merely use it. So uh, Mits- Mitscore uh, curated some uh, disaster date stories that some of our Wikimaniacs have set over in the past. Oh. And I'm going to kind of sprinkle them throughout the week. So, you know, like everyone gets a, gets a shine, uh, especially if it's a listener submitted. So, um, and this one particularly, I chose first because why not? This is one of our Discord goats. Uh, this one is uh, from Disney Can't Stop Me. Hey, so, yeah. Uh, finally reading their disaster date story. It's been a while since it's, since it's been posted. So, hey, never too late, right? We're doing so, it. <laughs> here, here we are. So, this is from Disney Can't Stop Me. So, I have a plethora. Uh, is it plethora? Plethora. Plethora, yeah. Plethora. So, I have a plethora. Like a, a growth or something. <laughs> I know. It does. I had to check myself a little bit there. Uh, so, I have a plethora. God damn. English is not my first language, people. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> Of disaster date stories, but this recent one for uh, from early September was certainly one to remember. Hope you enjoy, and I will add as well, I mix indigenous, Mongolian, and white. So I, 21 female, met this man on Hinge, 24 male, the day before the date. We talked for a bit after matching and got to know each other a bit. He seemed promising even though on his profile it said he had just gotten out of a serious relationship and was looking for uh, genuine connections. We talked about Pokemon together, and he said next time he's in town, he'll bring his Switch so we can play Sword and Shield. Hell yeah. It's a good first date. <laughs> it, it is. I mentioned to him my Pokemon are pretty powerful since I treat them well and spoil them. He then asked, would your Pokemon like a stepdad? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fucking funny. <laughs> uh, but uh, they put, which gave me an ick, yeah, but I brushed it off at the time. <laughs> it's funny, but it's definitely <laughs> a little bit too quick. <laughs> God, uh, bad choice. Um, I, t- I talked about how I love cooking Korean dishes and he replied with, quote, I think I already love you. Uh, okay. <laughs> I should have cut it right there, honestly, but a girl was lonely. I don't blame you. I mean, yeah, I get it. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> he asked me if I wanted to hang out the day after since he would only be in my area for a few days and told me which hotel he was at. I didn't have anything to do. And although I love my cat more than anything, I needed fresh air. So I told him I would think about it and went to bed after. We followed each other uh, after we followed each other on Instagram. So sorry about that. Um, next day, he's already texting me trying to set a time and everything usually closes around 6 p.m. here. And I didn't want to be out late since I worked at 9.30 a.m. the next day. So we met up around 5 p.m. and got some French fries from McDonald's before walking to the pier. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> I, want, I want French fries right now. French fry day. That's good. Yeah. I told him how I speak five languages just for fun. And he was a second generation immigrant from the Philippines. <sighs> so we spoke some Tagalog together. Wow. You make him up. People look bad. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We dunked on Canada last time. That's episode. <laughs> true. I have a shirt that says Sus Mar Yosep. And this, it, it, it relates to this situation. Okay. Okay. Um, you know what that means, Josh? No, I don't. <laughs> so, Sos Mar Yosep is like when people in the Philippines, when something like bad terribly happens, they go, ah, Sos Mar Yosep. Like, it's kind of like a, like, damn, right? Oh, like, okay. That gotcha. situation. Yeah, yeah. But Sos Mar Yosep is, is Jesus, Mary, Joseph. So, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, that's the, but they're just like, you know, colloquially, like just storing it to Sos Mar Yosep. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. the context. That's funny. Cause I think a lot of like French swear words are just religious <laughs> words. <laughs> Pretty much. I mean, I guess so damn that's... is technically when you think about it. Uh, true. Yeah. True. Um, the first thing I'd say went wrong was when he tried to convince me to yell, Putang ina, which means son of a bitch, uh, <laughs> okay. uh, at, at some Filipino woman we were walking by. I told him no, cause I respect people and have dignity. Yeah. He then continued trying to convince me to do it, acting as if he was just some funny dare. Y'all, I just wanted to eat my fries. Me too. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, we sat at the pier and I started to talk about this horribly made movie called Velocipaster, which almost destroyed my mom who went to film school and we laughed a bit. I thought maybe I had overthought some things about him. So then we got to the topic of drinks and I told him I don't really like to drink because I've never been able to get drunk. Um, 
I also explain how every guy I've gone out with takes me to the exact same bar and he tells me, don't worry, he doesn't like to drink either. Then, ask me if I want to go to the same exact bar. What the fuck? <laughs> what a weird... Fucking sucks. <laughs> um, I really didn't, but I agreed still for maybe some free food and iced tea. We get there, it's loud, and we're just talking about how our families are. On my grandma's side, they aren't supportive of the mixed part. Most of them still use slurs for me and my brother and mom. Ooh. Don't like that. Um, we chat about internalized racism, how it's hard to fit in when you aren't white enough, but not indigenous slash Filipino enough for certain groups. Then we got into talking about tattoos and music. I have 16 tattoos. Five of them are dedicated to BTS since they helped me get through high school and lots of family issues slash mental health. Lots of their songs are about mental health and loving yourself, so they're important to me. And I'm in the process of getting the mixtape mono tattooed everywhere. That's the boy band, right? I think so. It's the Korean okay. boy group, I think. Yeah, not, I, yeah. I, I've heard them, I think, on the radio, but I don't. Oh, they're like listen. all over Samsung commercials. Yeah, I, know, I know they're them. big. I just, I, I yeah, yeah, I don't, uh, I haven't heard them much. At least you can do the heart now, Josh. That's true. Um, there you go. Perfect. I mentioned to him that I have these tattoos and this man, he gives me this cheeky teasing grin and goes, oh, which I know all too well. Not one to let people think the way, uh, that way I tell him it's an album about depression and anxiety and his smile drops and the original teasing tone is now quite, oh. So he's quiet for a bit while I explain the meaning of the album to him before he asks about my general music taste. Mind you, this man has a Led Zeppelin tattoo. Okay. He does not, in fact, listen to Led Zeppelin. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> he has a tattoo, but I don't listen to them. Um, I was okay. about to say, I'm not picky, when he interrupts and says, don't say everything, because that's lame. So I show him my Spotify instead. I have a mix from TikTok songs to 2000s from when I was a kid. Oh, God damn it. I feel <laughs> <laughs> I was a whole ass teenager in the 2000s. Fuck uh, me, dude. I was a child. <laughs> Fuck. Um, he knows none of them except some usual names. Taylor, Black Eyed Peas, etc. Then he proceeds to try convincing me that his best friends with a K-pop idol who went to his middle school. And apparently this idol confides in him in a secret about his mental health. So now my dude is a therapist. I'm already done wanting to go home, only had one drink and some water while he has had three drinks and trying to convince, convince me to drink more. That's giving me That's the ick. That's not good, yeah. Nope. The music in the bar got really loud, so he asked if I wanted to leave. Now, I might not like this man, but I'll be damned if I walk through downtown alone. So he's walking me home. He stops at Tim Hortons for coffee and mm. links his arm with mine. I tell him straight up that even if he's walking me home, he will not be coming inside since I barely know him and my cat would hiss at him anyway. As we're walking, we talk about taxes and such. Then we get to the topic of- <laughs> What a wild <laughs> culture. topic. <laughs> taxes and hookup culture. What the fuck? <laughs> They're Canadian, I assume. <laughs> uh, no, yeah. I already knew there wouldn't be a second date or even a friendship when he tells me the story of a girl he was going to hook up with after telling me he doesn't like doing hookups. Okay. Appar apparently- he was at her place. They were about to do it when he asked if she had condoms since he didn't bring any. So she grabs them and apparently they're XL. So, okay. Big. My guy, you're Filipino. Chances are. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> we might be on the same boat here, brother. But, you know, that, definitely not XL. Starts with an X, but it doesn't end with an L. <laughs> um, Oh, no. He could have he he could have stopped there, but for some reason, after after all our talks about stereotypes and racism in our families, he feels the need to add, you know, XL condoms made for black men only. Oh God! Okay. <sighs> oh. Oh. I tell him that's a stereotype and horrible to say, and he ignores me. I just let him keep talking the rest of the way, pretty much, where he keeps bringing up stereotypes. Uh, and they put also tells me about how he tries really hard to fit in with his white coworkers and telling me how he wouldn't fit those condoms and didn't think he would be able to please a woman used to that size. Why this are you man about fully this? <laughs> I, I know, right? Uh -oh. This man fully told me he has a small thing. No cock shaming, people. Okay. But I, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I think, I don't think the issue is that necessarily. I think no, it's, it's that he's it's, telling it's, her this on the first date. 
which right after, is fucking yeah. wild. For, uh, unprompted. <laughs> unprompted. Um, we get to my apartment and I'm just wanting to go inside desperately, but he's talking about his schedule and when we can meet next. Never. The answer is never. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we part ways after an awkward hug and he keeps talking as I'm trying to go inside. He updates me when he's back at his hotel and I leave. Uh, I left him on open. Next day, him knowing I'm working all day, asks if I'm busy and I don't reply till I'm off work and say I was working. He leaves me on red, then comments thirstily on my Instagram post. Haven't talked to him since then, but every few weeks he will message me saying, hey, hope you're not dating anyone yet. I would love to see you again. Oh, God. And to end the story, my friends currently refer to him as... Mr. Big Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that guy sounds like he has God. some stuff to work through. Oh, in therapy. he does. <laughs> A lot of therapy. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. For sure, for sure. Thank you. Disney can stop me for sending that disastrous date story. It sounds very disastrous. And, and, and hopefully that was the first and the last date that you went. <laughs> Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, but I heard Timmy's and I was like, this is a Canadian story. And definitely, definitely. Made me yeah. sad. But. Well, you know, that could Canadian guy, but it's also Filipino. So like we both took a hit here. <laughs> it's true. We're 50-50. Making our people look bad. <laughs> How man. dare you? <laughs> How dare you, Mr. Big Dick? Come on. Come on. What? That's what he didn't do because yeah. you didn't get a second date. He didn't so, have that uh, big dick energy. Mm, not at all <laughs> not at all all right we're gonna go on a quick break support whoever's supporting us and uh, we'll be right back for this version of fuck mary eat it's just gonna be josh and i doing this so we'll be right back with comedians. and we're back so i gotta put this little schlink here give me one second uh so you can see what they look like josh okay all right you know how we do fuck mary eat this is how we do it. Three rounds, three Yeet. people. But uh, Alex, our amazing writer, the amazing Underbaki, uh, is doing a cryptid part two because it is Halloween tomorrow when this episode comes out. She I chose about that. <laughs> yeah, she chose a uh, famous Halloween villain. So they uh, she put this week because it is one day away from Halloween. We've got some iconic Halloween villains to choose from. Ooh. Sure, they may be murderous, but maybe you can look past that when you learn more about them. Okay. So, first, uh, murderer? <laughs> <laughs> first oh, God. date. Pennywise, the clown. Do you want a date that's both funny and absolutely terrifying to be around? Look no further than Stephen King's Pennywise from the novel turned movie, It. For those who don't know the name, Pennywise is an ancient trans-dimensional evil entity who eats children, and they put and sometimes adults, depending on the story depiction. <laughs> don't worry, Pennywise seems to only attack those who are from Derry, Maine. Unless you also see them, then you may want to keep the turtle nearby. Uh, According to a Mental Floss article, Pennywise's only enemy is Maturin, uh, a turtle from the same universe Pennywise comes from. So uh, first date, Pennywise loves kids, loves (laughs) kids or hates them, only kills kids, right? He eats eats kids. So he loves to eat them. Uh, he definitely killed for me for Pennywise. He sounds like a pedophile already because he only preys on children. So now, Sometimes adults. And has a weird true. beef with a turtle. <laughs> <laughs> also, yeah, he, his hairline's looking like mine. So. I was going to say, brother, that's like, that's me. <laughs> that's me in like a couple years. I don't know. I, I'm, uh, yeah, kill for Pennywise for me so far. Yeah, he's uh, low on my list. I'm curious to see very, who's next. <laughs> Low on my list. All right, next up. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ghost face. Uh, nothing screams. Uh, good one, Alex. Nah. Uh, nothing screams a loving partner than someone who is willing to sit and talk to you on the phone for hours. True. True that. Kiss me through the phone, ghost face. Um, <laughs> introducing ghost face, the mask wearing serial killer from the Scream movie franchise. Ghost face is known to call their victims before slashing them. At least they have good communication skills. That's right? true. Um, that is true. 
<laughs> Originally sold as a father death costume in real life, Ghostface has become its own iconic Halloween character. Perhaps take some safety advice from Ghostface's Halloween season and don't forget to set the alarm. Mm. So this one's up there for me. It is. Uh, I like the communication bit. So it might do. be a Mary. Mary. Okay. Yeah. All uh, right. We'll see. We'll see. Last but not the least, uh, it's only fitting that this this murderer is here, but Michael Myers. Oh, <laughs> so mommy issues. Mommy issues. So <laughs> might be great in the sack, right? Uh, true. <laughs> um, <laughs> sometimes a soft spoken introverted date is your thing. That's okay. Except Michael is more of a non speaking murderous guy, often wielding a chef's knife. Could you cook though, Michael Myers? Um, <laughs> Michael first came out as an iconic character of the spooky, se- uh, spooky season in the 1978 film, Halloween. Michael was introduced to viewers as a young boy who murders his elder sister, Judith Myers. 15 years later, he returns home to Haddonfield, Illinois to murder more teenagers. Originally known as The Shape, American filmmaker John Carpenter reportedly based the character after visiting a mental institu- institution in Kentucky during a class trip. So. Three candidates. We have Pennywise, oh. Ghostface, and Michael Myers. Josh, who would you fuck? Who would you marry? And who would you eat? So I think I'm marrying Scream. Uh, just communication? Yeah. <laughs> communication. <laughs> purely on that. Oh, uh, yeah. Absolutely. Also, he only works one night of the year, you know? True. <laughs> you get him the rest of the time. Yeah. Um, man, Michael Myers definitely needs to... to get therapy. But oh, for uh, sure. <laughs> All of them do. <laughs> uh, well, one's a trans-dimensional being, so I don't know. Oh, true. I don't know if therapy will work on him, but... Maybe if Michael Myers talked a little more, then maybe they could, you know, say their feelings out loud. That's true. But, uh, I mean, for one night, you don't need talking, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's going to be my fuck, I think. And then Pennywise, uh, I think the, the eating, I think eating children is uh, a no-no on my, my list. Yeah. I got to say, I got to agree with you, brother, because, uh, you know, who, who doesn't love to have like long conversations on the phone? Yeah. But for the longest time, I thought I thought uh, Ghostface was a character from like scary movie. Like I never realized that they were actually from Scream. So this whole for time, a while, I, thought, I it, thought that too. <laughs> for the whole time, I was just like, oh, damn, it's the dude that goes, what that? It was that. Or have you seen the, the SNL skit with Pete <gasps> Davidson? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Is it the one where he goes... Okay, the Chad one, right? (laughs) He keeps calling him to try and scare him, (laughs) and Pete's just like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking love that skit, dude. That's great. Oh, Uh, my gosh. But yeah, that's it for uh, the Patreon bonus story. Hopefully, y'all enjoyed that uh, short, spooky story. Beautifully read, by the way, Josh. Oh, it was a joint effort. Uh, Thank you, thank you. All right, so uh, we're going to close this episode off. But before we do that, Josh, any comments or anything that you want to plug? Oh man, I've got so much. I got merch stuff to do. I've got a couple comments do here. It. So we're going to do, uh, we're going to do, I'll do the comments first and then I'll leave the merch stuff till the end. Um, yeah. <laughs> this one was funny. Uh, Rebecca McManus, uh, 4718 on YouTube said, every time I hear about John and Juliet's relationship, I become more convinced that John is a trophy husband. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I want that for me. <laughs> he, he is a trophy. Uh, but, uh, he's still got to work. <laughs> I still got to work. I'm trying to get there. I just thought that one was funny. Um, <laughs> on the episode we did, am I the asshole? Uh, two Fridays ago, my friend thinks she has a chance with me. Am I the asshole? <gasps> oh uh, yeah. This is the one where we discussed the bridesmaid, uh, you know, Oh, with the Disney princess wearing, right? uh, the Tilda Disney princess dress at the, yeah. at the wedding. Um, so we, we said, uh, at, at the end we were like, well, we're not black women. We don't, don't know if we have a true say on this. Cause we called them not, yeah. or we called them an asshole for, uh, making it a big deal. Um, but we left the door open to potentially being wrong. Uh, there were many people that were like, Hey, I'm black. I don't see an issue with this. There are some people in the middle where they're like, yeah, I didn't have an issue to, with it until she was like, Hey, you should tan tan. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. And then we had a few people that were like, no, this one was giving me the heebie-jeebies from the beginning. Um, so we had quite a few different uh, comments on that. We actually had quite a few comments from uh, cosplay 
uh, people in our community. So Christina Moser, six, five, five, eight, uh, says on her YouTube. So as a cosplayer, I can tell you that the Tian addressed oddly enough is a huge subject of debate in certain areas of my play world. I have the sweetest, kindest and honest, uh, mixed race friend make the Tian address before, but because she's incredibly pale and white passing certain sections of the internet made damn sure to make her feel bad simply for wearing a dress that was made for an Afri African American character. She never posted the photos or wore the dress that she made herself ever again. I personally do not agree with that decision because it feels like the false wokeness, but I'm here to just say that this is a very, very divided issue across the board. Um, that's too bad. Cause <laughs> I mean, yeah, the, a cosplaying is a lot of work, man. Like, that's, yeah. Uh, the hours that you put trying to like create something custom too. That's, that's sad to, to hear that. And uh, like your friend is mixed race. So like, yeah, that uh, too. Just assuming is, is wild of people online to do that. False wokeness does exist. I don't know if it was in this case, the story I can't remember quite, but she uh, sounded genuinely like just concerned, not comfortable. Yeah. 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 Uh, and speaking to that, uh, TK say Brown four, uh, sorry, eight, four, two, eight. I apologize. Usernames are hard to read. <laughs> uh, they say as a black woman in the cosplay community, I see way more hatred toward and venoms fit at black women who have the audacity to cosplay as white slash non-black characters. The amount of argument I see when someone cosplay as comic Starfire from the Teen Titans is crazy. Uh, Damn. Yeah. It, well, if you remember back like a few months ago with uh, the Black Little Mermaid, the amount of yeah, people that, that were was like, like a topic. Yeah. This is. Uh, unacceptable this is blasphemous yeah are the same people who immediately defend uh people dressing up as as indigenous people or something like that you know it's like yeah. something actually uh gross um but go ahead sorry you were about to say something no good. i was just gonna say like i feel like cosplaying is like it should be for everybody you know like it's a yeah. form of expression and that's and as long as like you're not stepping in like like what you said, Josh, like, you know, dressing up as like indigenous people or like disrespecting some sort of like culture. Mm -hmm. um, as long as it's approached in, in like a, a respectful manner, I, I feel like, like I say, I, I feel like cosplay should, should, should be accessible to everyone, no matter what, like, as long as it's like a character, like it's a character, right? Like it's yeah. not like something mocking a, a specific like group of people or like, you know, status, but also I don't know. for white people to be like, Hey, you can't dress up as this character. Uh, I want to say like 90% of the Wild. characters are white. And so like, who yeah. are they supposed to dress up as, uh, you know what I mean? Like it's just a crazy take from the other way. Um, I agreed. And then this commenter keeps, uh, goes on and says, uh, regarding to this, the story that the Tiana dress story, um, mm -hmm. there are ways to do cosplay or dress as a modern version of black characters without doing blackface and stereotypical actions. They could have compromised and had the style of the dress or pin or something to symbolize the different princesses like having a magnolia flower or a little frog in the bridesmaid's floral arrangement. There are so many steps that could have been taken. So I agree with that. That's we, a good, yeah. There was tons of good, good comments uh, in our comment section as well as on Patreon. Uh, lots of people talking about this, um, which we love to see because it's, it's nice to see the other love a civil conversation. That's, yeah. that's, that's what we're all about. As long as y'all like open and, uh, we're always, we always say that, Hey, we're, we're more than open to learn about these things. And we love a good perspective as long as, you know, it's, 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 uh, presented in a respectful manner and y'all have been nothing but respectful. So thank you. Yes. Uh, on that episode, there was <laughs> on that episode. Some <laughs> Sometimes episode. we're like, okay, like, well, <laughs> I'm like, all right, guys, we're people too. Like, don't take our word as like, you know, it's the law, right? It's yeah. at the end of the day, we are an opinion podcast and we're always like, always say that hey we're not professionals we don't have any like you know accreditation saying like our word is like you know something that could be fucking published just or there's tons of perspectives perspectives we'll just never have uh exactly because we are men or i'm white you know there's tons of uh perspectives exactly. we're open to listen to so uh we we did have someone curse us in the comments once which was the funniest thing that was seen. like <laughs> People, people like at the end of the day, like the, the vibe that we want to give out to you, it, you know, it's just like, it's just like you having a conversation with your buddy at a, at a, at a pub or a bar or something, right? Yeah. Like we're just having a conversation. There's a lot of times where I don't agree with Josh or sometimes Josh doesn't agree with me, but Hey, look, we don't take anything personally. Like no. we, I understand where he's coming from. He gets where I'm coming from. And that's, that's the type of vibe we want to give to people. Like have those difficult conversations 
and still be respectful towards each other's like point of view. So yeah. that's that's all I'm leaving out to it. I will say if you curse us in the comments, uh all I I'm, will all I'm thinking for you is get therapy. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. You have a lot of misdirect misdirected anger. Uh I do be stopping reading comments now because I'm so yeah. tempted to just be like, I I'm not nice, guys. Like I will clap back if needed. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't want to alienate our fans and I don't want to ruin our brand for those specific reasons. <laughs> That's good. We might have to take away I, your social media. I could condition. be a heinous person if needed. You fuck with me, see what happens. Oh, <laughs> damn, I don't want to see that side of John. No. Nah, uh, nah. But we do have some some uh, merch messages here that I'd like to get to. Um, I'm not sure if I've shouted this person out, but uh, Megan said, this is one of my favorite podcasts and I always recommend to my friends. Thank you for keeping me company on long car rides and they donate $3 with their purchase. Oh, thank you. Uh, Rebecca S. They say, just finished listening to every single episode. You guys get me through my work day with a smile on my Wild. face. Thank you for being you. And they sent a $3 donation as well. That's uh, 200 hours of your life. What are you doing? That's more probably. <laughs> probably more. Yeah. Um, Victoria says, I'm so excited with a t-shirt emoji. Emily W says, always look forward to listening to the pod. Thank you guys for being genuine and hilarious. Mary J says, hope you guys can all leave corporate America sooner rather than later. Please, and please. I want to highlight this one, John. I want to highlight this one. And I was holding this one today because I was hoping Sean would be here for this one. Okay. With their order, they send a hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, Thank you very much, Mary J, for that uh, wonderfully generous donation. Uh, we appreciate that uh, so much, uh, honestly. Why? <laughs> <laughs> because you're so funny, John. That's why. Thank was, you. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was awesome. Thank you very much for that. Rachel C says, absolutely love you guys. Please, please keep doing what you're doing. And they send $3 as well. And then the final one here uh, is from Gabrielle. And they say, thanks for making me laugh. And they also donate $3. So thank, thank you very you much, guys. everyone. Oh my God. Um, Y'all are too real. <laughs> yeah, I appreciate them. And I appreciate these ones because they go straight to the business bank account instead of Sean's bank account. <laughs> you know what I'm Hello. saying? You know what I'm saying, John? Yeah. A lot of money, man, here. <laughs> Uh, but yes, thank you very much, everyone who has purchased uh, merch and donated. Uh, we appreciate all of you. Uh, don't thank forget, you uh, for Halloween. You can get a ring ghost merch. Uh, we've also got the Ogtha apparel that we've got coming <laughs> this uh, today. coming up. So uh, you can go check that out. Uh, link in the description. Awesome. Well, I have one and uh, I want to apologize to this Wikimaniac because they've sent us a message on Patreon and I will take the L for this because I have been so busy with my personal life that I haven't had the chance uh, to check a lot of the messages. Mm. Uh, I again, I do apologize, um, but they sent this over all the way back in August. Oh God! So, <laughs> it's what it's October? Been, almost. It's almost October. November. Apologies. It's <laughs> apologies. Uh, really, really sorry, but um, uh, Sap Savantology wrote this all the way back from August seventh. Damn. Oh my God, it paints me. Um, <laughs> again, uh, Josh has created like a more like easier streamlined way to uh, get like a Patreon or, or those cameo Cameos, requests yeah. or just like requests in general. Unfortunately, Patreon is not great when it comes to like messaging and informing us. So a lot of times is we're not ignoring you. We just don't get notified. It gets <laughs> so lost. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does get lost a lot. There's no way for us to like organize anything. So if one goes like, you know, it, it, it we just don't see it so I'll pull, but we're not we're, we're, we're still uh apologizing for that because Absolutely. you know you you're a supporter and uh uh we do apologize it took so long but i'm reading this message i also messaged you back finally and you said you were okay with it but i wanted to say sorry again um they put uh savantology put hi guys my name is savannah and i'm a new patron and they put best investment i've ever made <laughs> And I was wondering I if y'all could do. We ignored them for two months. <laughs> that hurts. But they're so nice. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Savannah has been so nice. So thank you, Savannah. Um, I was wondering if y'all could do me a favor. My partner Ben and I are celebrating our first anniversary together hey. this Thursday. Oh shit! Uh, and I was wondering if you could give us a shout out. I listen to the podcast religiously, and I absolutely adore you guys. Sometimes I throw on the newest episode when I'm hanging out with my partner. 
and I love hearing him laugh and react to you guys. And uh, Savannah, this is probably a huge reason why I didn't read this. Just kidding. They put pretty sure Sean is his favorite. Oh, that's boo. What did it say? Just ben? Kidding. Is it Ben? <laughs> <laughs> Get bet. <laughs> just, just kidding. Yeah. We all know Sean is the favorite. Yeah. Um, I know I'm late because of y'all's recording schedule, but I thought it couldn't hurt to ask. Side note, big congrats to Josh and Sienna. So <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we, we, we appreciate oh, it. And, and I was going to say happy uh, first anniversary. Happy almost second anniversary by the time <laughs> this comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for, for listening and supporting, even if Sean is your favorite. Um, you have questionable choices, Ben. <laughs> yeah, come on, Ben. <laughs> what is it about Sean that you like better? Is it his name? Ben? Cause we can change his, that. Yeah. <laughs> 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 nah, but congratulations, both of you. Happy anniversary. And again, uh, Savannah, thank you for your continued patience and thank you for supporting uh, you answered immediately when I finally got the chance to respond to you and you were so grac- uh, gracious and graceful about it. So thank you again. Happy anniversary. More love, more life co- uh, uh, coming your way. So uh, we appreciate y'all and, and we love you. And uh, last but not the least, um, selfishly, I'm plugging this and uh, because I wanted to say thank you to everyone uh, who supported Juliet's cookbook. Hell um, yeah. All the kind words you said to her, whether it's in Discord or left reviews in her storefront on Etsy. Um, y'all have been so receptive and nice to her that she now has a bestseller badge on Etsy for oh, that product. Shit. So that's cool. Fucking <laughs> insane. Um, guys, uh, she is just like so over the moon about it. Very uh she was very pleased and, and just very humbly uh humbled. Um, she's such a busy woman. Like this girl all not only is like full time in a tech space. So like fucking insane, right? She's back in school. God damn. <laughs> and she still made a cookbook. Uh, she's just doing it all. And she's, she planned like our trip that are coming uh, coming up. So like, guys, Julia is just really thankful. And she actually dropped me off a, a meal before this. And she cooks too. So like she dropped me off like a shrimp tempura plate. Oh my with, goodness. Uh, with, uh, I think it's like- You are um, a trophy husband. <laughs> I am a trophy husband. This looks like bang bang shrimp. So it's like uh, a spicy shrimp, essentially. Uh, so I am going to be eating this, enjoying this, but selfishly uh, plugging this, saying thank you. But check out a really random cookbook on Etsy. Links on our show notes. Juliet loves y'all. And and I'm trying to con- like, trying to get her to like um, do a recording with me someday for maybe like a, a bonus Patreon story. So oh, that'd you'll be get cool. her as a- as a treat too. So thank y'all Wikimaniacs. Uh, that's all I got. Sweet. Anything else, Josh? No, just uh, that the link to that will be in the show notes. That's all I wanted to shout out there. Bestseller. <laughs> Bestseller Holy is crazy. Shit. That's, that's sweet. crazy. Badge and everything. So <laughs> Damn. Um, if you like what we do, uh, consider leaving a review for us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or our website, Reddit on Wiki, or consider being a patron. Uh, we're not going to try to leave you on red for a long time uh, <laughs> to get exclusive access and bonus content. Rock our merch like the Ring Ghost merch that Josh is rocking right now. Ogtha infesting your closet <gasps> pretty soon. Um, but the cheapest way to help us get discovered is tell your friends about us. Tag us on your stories. Or your or, spouse. Or, or your spouse. <laughs> or your partners. Like what Savannah is doing with Ben and his questionable choices of whoever yeah, he co likes as a ghost. Uh, what the heck? God damn it. Anyways. <laughs> um, but really the best way uh, to uh, for more listeners to discover us is spread the good word that is Reddit on Wiki. But uh, you can find all our info in our show notes. But until then, we'll see you this Friday. Sean is not there yet. Oh, Sean will be here. Sean should be this here. Friday's episode. Hopefully. But <laughs> hopefully. Uh, check out our, our Roll for Punishment for September episode. <sighs> Josh going to eat something disgusting. The white man gets punished and who wouldn't like to and see that And we love shit, that. So. <laughs> and we love that. And I didn't say uh, Sean, so apologies. But anyways, thank y'all. Wicked Maniacs. We'll see you this Friday. Bye. Your boy Sean. <laughs> <laughs>